The tides of history have left me little choice. And once again, science will require the sacrifice of the insignificant. I'm always a little bit hesitant to do request reviews for video games, especially when there's an abundance of requests for a particular title. The issue here is that most of the people who want to see their favorite childhood game reviewed want to hear me affirm their belief of how amazing the game is. Nostalgia is a powerful drug, man. Like an average game is always going to be average, but an average game with nostalgia attached to it, well, that's something else entirely. Case in point is Era 51, an FPS developed by Midway Austin for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox back in 2005. And yeah, look, I guess 2005 is pretty much far back enough now that people can legitimately feel nostalgia for games released around that time period. Taking place in the mysterious Era 51, you're part of a hazmat team sent into the facility after a deadly virus has been released that seems to basically turn people into alien and zombie hybrids. There's a lengthy and surprisingly well done intro cinematic that sets up the events of the game, and after that a short tutorial sequence before you can get straight into shooting things. Part of what makes Area 51 so interesting is that it has a pretty well known cast of mostly Hollywood voice actors, something that wasn't really being done that much at the time in gaming. The protagonist, your character Ethan Cole, is voiced by David Duchovny, who sounds a little bit bored and barely talks outside of interlude cinematics. Nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to encounter. One of the characters in the game is voiced by Marilyn Manson, which isn't really all that amazing in 2017, nor really was it in 2005. Feast your eyes on this menagerie of decay and corruption. And one of your allies, a man named Dr. Cray, is voiced by Ian Ambercrombie, who I'll always remember as Mr. Pitt from Seinfeld. Goody! Yes, yes, yes! Next up, part of it, next up! Part of it. And you know what? It's actually not a bad story, and it's told well for the most part. The game also practically confirms the existence of the Illuminati, and also that the moon landing was a hoax. Initially, you're just fighting the infected troops that I guess worked at Era 51 before you start taking on the Illuminati and some other alien type enemies towards the end of the game. Then quite early on in the game, Ethan gets infected by the virus, which turns him into some kind of infected mutant, yet for some reason he's able to control his infection and even able to switch back and forth between mutant and human mode. Playing the game in either mutant or human mode is going to have a couple of key differences. As a mutant, you're able to fire out projectiles that replenish your health, enemies are highlighted, and you've also got more resistance to damage. I mean, it sounds cool on paper, but it's really not for two main reasons. Firstly, the vast majority of enemies you're fighting at this point use guns, and closing the gap to reach them is kind of costly. Secondly, shooting people is just easier. Now don't get me wrong, the mutant mode is a neat idea, it's just not really all that effective, and I used it maybe a dozen times in the entire campaign, if that. In terms of the shooting side of things, Area 51 is about as standard as they come. You've got a pistol, an assault rifle, a machine gun, a shotgun, a sniper rifle, and a couple of grenades. Later on you get a couple of alien weapons, most of which aren't all that groundbreaking even for 2005, though they are effective when used properly. The machine gun and shotgun can be dual welded which makes them very effective and also a hell of a lot of fun to use. I'd say that dual wielding shotguns is by far my most favourite weapon in the game and can clean out a group of enemies pretty damn quick. When it comes to the enemies you're either fighting the infected who use basic melee attacks or the Illuminati who are the same looking enemy skin over and over for probably 80% of the game. Occasionally these guys will hang back with a sniper rifle and take shots at you from a distance but that's about it. The AI isn't exactly genius level either, I mean they know how to take cover, they can throw grenades with half decent accuracy and they practically never miss with their shots. But on the flip side you'll see them standing there with a live grenade at their feet or sometimes they don't even react to your presence at all. The infected enemies on the other hand will just make a beeline straight towards the player with little regard for their own well-being, but maybe that was kind of the point. Thankfully the shooting feels decent enough, even if it is as vanilla as you could possibly get. Area 51 has a pretty basic physics engine, but it does make the gunfights a little bit more entertaining. Especially when you throw a well placed grenade into a cluster of enemies and send them ragdolling in three different directions. Weapons feel fun to shoot, the screen has a nice amount of jitter when you're firing, and they all look pretty good and are animated pretty well considering the age of the game. In fact, one thing I was actually really surprised about was how well this game runs. A lot of games from around the early to mid 2000s often have a bit of trouble running on modern hardware and can be a bit of a bitch to get running at all. But I didn't have any problems with Era 51, I mean it kept a really smooth 60 frames per second the entire time without any random visual glitches and it can even run in 4K if you're so inclined. 
Obviously, you're going to get a few rough edges here and there, but it's kind of to be expected, and despite it being pretty damn obvious that it was a console game ported to PC, it's stable enough where it matters most, which is really saying something. The repetitive corridors of Area 51 aren't all that nice to look at, I mean it's mostly just grey metallic environments, but when you start to get to some of the alien areas for the last few levels of the game, it still looks pretty good and has a nice art style that's really appealing. And these moments kind of reminded me a little bit of Halo. Speaking of Halo, I think Area 51 has about the same FOV, around like 50 or so. Yeah, it's pretty low and it can take a while to get used to if you're not used to playing FPS games from that perspective. I know there's a few people out there who really get their gears grinded over this kind of thing and there doesn't seem to be any way to change it, which kinda sucks. It's also got the other features you'd expect from a console shooting game, so expect the absence of quick saves and the inclusion of a half assed checkpoint system. Now look, I don't hate checkpoints, I just wish they'd be implemented with some kind of care and thought. I mean, if you're going to put one in a level, just put it after the cinematic, after the short section of dialogue, or after that really hard gunfight. It's not so much to ask, is it? Another thing that kind of irritated me was how the area to interact with something like a switch or a control panel is really small. Now, I'm not sure if this is just an issue with the PC port, but you have to kind of move around and mash the interact button until you find the sweet spot. I guess it's not a huge issue if you're not under fire, but during areas where you've got to press a bunch of buttons in a time limit while you're being shot at, it becomes really annoying. Area 51 isn't a particularly long game. I don't know about people who played it on consoles as a kid, but playing it as an adult male on the PC took me around 6 hours to get through. And the only areas I had trouble with were the last couple levels, where the game just becomes insanely difficult as they introduce some really annoying new enemy types. Not to mention they go down that old, let's just throw a bazillion enemies at the player route, and it's a shame too, because these are the most visually appealing levels in the entire game. But anyway, getting your hands on Area 51 is easy, and the game's been free for a while now, so the only thing it costs if you want to check it out is your time. There's definitely worse FPS games out there, and yet there's definitely better ones as well. Area 51 isn't bad or horrible, it's just okay, and that's pretty much how I'd sum the whole thing up. It's okay. The shooting is solid enough, the characters are interesting, it runs well, and it has a unique premise. And if that sounds like your cup of tea, then check it out. The truth is out there. Goody! Yes, yes, yes! Next top part of the next top part. You are a genius.